Okay. I think we'll get this show on the road. It's two minutes past ten. It is the 6th of March, and today is Tech Wednesday again. And this time, we have a couple of uh, great speakers. I know Andrea had asked to do this a while ago. He wanted to talk about brushes in Photoshop, the winter brushes in Photoshop. And he invited Kyle to join him, Kyle Webster. So I'm thrilled they're both here. Uh, you've seen the polls, um, Andrea and Kyle. So with that, I think I will change the layout now. And Andrea, I think you're going to kick this off and introduce what you're going to talk about, who you are, and, and Kyle. Uh, hi, everyone. So this Tech Wednesday is about winter brushes. And I'm here with uh, Kyle with the Webster, which is like... Adobe Design Evangelist, and it did make these amazing brushes that I'm going to showcase of, like, I'm doing my workflow with Photoshop and Dimension. But, yeah, like, let's introduce, uh, introduce Kyle with his brushes. So Great. Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, and I don't know how many of you are familiar with this brush update, but just to quickly tell you... Um, about once a quarter, sometimes more often, I'm still producing brushes at Adobe in sets that no longer are part of the larger sets that existed um, prior to my joining uh, Adobe. Rather, the idea here is that with every update, um, I try and include enough of a variety of tools to allow someone to download uh, just an update and then still be able to create uh, something finished with a lot of different mark making possibilities. So um, that's really the goal for each of these, these later sets. Um, the previous sets were more sort of organized by medium or media, and that's no longer the case. So what I'm doing instead is uh, just trying to create these, these well-rounded, really fun sets. And sometimes I even throw in some kind of experimental stuff, um, such as the scribbler brushes, which are in this set now. So shall I go ahead and share my screen? Yeah, show your screen. Uh, All right, so I will do that. OK. All right, so I'm in Photoshop here, and um, I've opened up the winter brushes here in my brushes panel. I wanted to just uh, quickly review what the brushes are for those who haven't seen them and also just mention a little bit about how and why I um, included them in this set. Maybe talk a little bit about process and uh, how these things come to be. Um, over here on the right I was just making a little color palette but I'm really not that happy with it so I may use it, I may not, we'll see. Uh, so I always try and include a few drawing tools. And so for this set, we have um, a brush that was actually inspired by Mitch Gerads, who, uh, if anybody out there reads comics, um, he's working on Mr. Miracle uh, with Tom King. And he wrote me an email um, a long time ago asking about creating a brush that mimicked a certain kind of natural media inking tool that he had. It was a marker that he liked to use. And so I created it for him and emailed it to him and then uh, decided why not just um, give it to everybody because I was really happy with it. So that's what we're having here at the top called the buttery inker. And what I like about this is that it allows you to use the tilt of your stylus if you have a more, um, I would say, sophisticated uh, setup where you have uh, either a Wacom uh, Cintiq or Mobile Studio or a... Uh, a more professional tablet that they make, um, you'll be able to use pen tilt in addition to pen pressure to control certain parts of the brush, so, or attributes of the brush. So uh, there's already a built-in texture that's uh, pretty subtle, but if you tilt the, pe the pen away from uh, vertical, you actually engage um, with that, that surface more and wind up revealing more of that texture. So the lines I'm making right now are the result of me tilting my pen away from 
vertical. And what I mean is if this is the surface and this is my pen, uh, this is my 90 degree angle. So if I were drawing with the pen perfectly upright, making contact with the surface here, I would get a line that looks like this. So it's perfectly sharp and um, you don't see any of the texture really coming through other than on the edges of the stroke. Whereas if I tilt my stylus like so and draw more with sort of the, um, the side uh, or the barrel of the, of the pencil, not, not the, or the not stylus, excuse me, not the tip, uh, then I'm going to get marks that look like this. So I'm getting more of the texture coming through. Uh, so that's, that's a really handy thing because then you can do a combination of different sorts of marks with a single tool. And when you want to really work more lightly, uh, you could do something like draw your, uh, your eye. And then if you want to add a little bit of tone here or in the iris or something, I can simply tilt the stylus and do that. But I can still get those bold lines when I need them by bringing the stylus more upright. So I hope that, I hope that makes sense to everybody. Uh, so there are a couple of other tools in this set that do that. Like I said, I like to include enough things for everybody to be able to do more than one thing uh, with these newer sets. They're not so hyper-focused. So there are a couple of other inking tools in here. We have the Golden Age Inker which is a nice sort of line that gets broken apart as you draw. These were inspired by, um, these golden age inkers were inspired by advertisements I saw um, that were drawn in the, uh, I guess, 50s and 60s, sort of the golden age of, of, um, of the, the Mad Men era, so to speak. And a lot of the draftsmanship there, what they would do is they would use the Lucy machine, which is where they would, they would trace a photograph and in tracing the photograph, they would use this, this sort of broken line, and it gave more of the impression that you were looking at uh, something that had been just uh, hand-drawn. But of course, they were using this reference uh, from the photos. But there was always this, this nice broken quality to the line. And so uh, that's what these have in them. And uh, what's really nice, too, is that no mark is going to be similar to the next. So every time you draw with it, you get a completely different line. I'm a big fan of randomization in brushes. I don't like it to be, uh, depending on what's going on, but I most of the time don't like there to be a really discernible, obvious, repeating stamp. Uh, so I try and avoid that, especially for drawing tools and inking tools. So this is just a variant of that same brush. And I glossed over these watercolor draggers. They're in a different category. And this is a category where what I like to do is be able to uh, just put tone somewhere on, um, on the surface and, and then just play with it. And so these take advantage of Photoshop's uh, brush settings for wet edges, which is something that doesn't often get used because um, if you don't know how to combine the other settings in the brushes panel with wet edges, you often get sort of a uh, very boring sort of a mark and uh, but by combining it with with texture and a dual brush and transfer you can actually create some really interesting effects with the wet edges uh, so that means that the strokes I make have just a little bit of a darker um, edge to them and but depending on how much pressure I use I can also create some pretty interesting effects in the interior of the area I'm painting as well so uh, these two brushes take advantage of that, and they're just good for, sort of for just putting some interesting tone down on your canvas uh, without it being obvious that you're using a uh, digital tool. So it has a really interesting natural sort of look to it. The other thing I like about this too is that it responds to um, rotation of the pen, and uh, that's, something, that's something that's confusing for a lot of people because they think you need the Wacom Art Pen to achieve rotation. You actually don't. Um, you just need a, a pen that responds to tilt. And all I'm doing is, is turning my wrist. I hope you all can see the stamp on the screen um, as I'm doing this. So here we go. 
All right, I'll move on to the, um, the background brushes. Uh, this is something I, I pointed out at Adobe Max, which is taking advantage of color dynamics in Photoshop. Basically, color dynamics allow you to paint more than one color in a single stroke. Uh, so these, these brushes were created, again, sort of because of customer demand. People wanted more brushes to quickly fill in and paint backgrounds with that had some life to them and some interesting patterns and shapes, as well as some color variation. Uh, and so this is meant to answer uh, that request. And you can see that in just a matter of seconds here, I can fill an area. And there's a lot of interesting stuff happening here with the color variation. That's because color dynamics are activated. Um, so, and there's something about this again, just I don't know why I said 1960s, but um, the way I title these, sometimes there's a logic to it, sometimes not. Uh, but this is just really a nice way to be able to add a lot of variation to an area that you're painting with some, some, uh, some strokes without having to go and change the color constantly. So just as a backdrop, I think this really can do wonders um, for your work. There's also a little built-in canvas texture in this one. Comes through here and there when you need it. And that's also controlled by pen pressure. And then I had an, uh, another one from this. This is the background too. And it has a much more gritty sort of look to it, as you can see here. And combining the two and sampling color as I paint just gives me these really interesting backgrounds, and so that's why they're called background brushes. Uh, also, the Whisper brush uh, is just a softer paintbrush um, for anybody that's working and just needs a sort of a soft effect with edges that aren't so sharp. This is really great for that. It's, it's good for painting um, elements that are in the distance. Uh, maybe you've got some, some hills off in the distance that you're painting and they just kind of, you know, fade into something else. This really works nicely for that. Very soft transitions are possible. Everything, again, is responding to the, the tilt. And if I want a sharper edge, I can use more pressure, and it actually creates a sharper edge with that same brush. So pretty versatile, like so. Uh, then the uh, drag dot brush is just one of these weird brushes. I'm not sure. <laughs> Why I came up with this one, probably it was by accident, like many things. Um, but I like it because uh, no matter what you do, again, you're going to get an, a stroke that does not immediately follow uh, what came before it. So even though I'm using the same primary stamp, the dual brush stamp in here, which is this dot pattern, along with the texture that's being exposed, uh, create a really nice random effect every time. Uh, so I find this useful for if you were going to paint any kind of a textured area like sand or uh, rock or something like that. I'm sure you'd find many other uses for it. But um, with a really light pressure, I can just expose the texture and the dual brush. Uh, but with, with a darker or heavier pressure, rather, I can, I can carve around it. So even something just like this, to me, resembles um, a rocky surface here. And I can just uh, outline that. So for comics artists and people like that, maybe you want to throw some rocks in the background, you could just do that with this one single brush in a really short amount of time. Uh, and then uh, there's some others. Uh, similar broken brush has some similar stuff going on. And then the concept art chopper is, is really just a brush for concept artists who are looking to quickly work with darks and lights to paint out a scene. Uh, so this is for people who work at video game art and film art, and they're just trying to paint in some atmosphere and get a couple of elements defined um, before they move on to some kind of tighter rendering. Uh, it just works really well for that. It's, it's really loose. It's really um, textured. Great for that kind of work. And now we get to the scribblers, and the scribblers are meant to just be a lot of fun for filling in uh, scribbly <laughs> textures and patterns. Um, and so what I found is nice for these is that, you know, I could, I could paint a shape, like maybe this is going to be uh, some kind of a plant, a bush, whatever, and then grab a color that's just a little bit different and use one of the scribblers to add some interest in there. Like so, if you grab a darker color, 
to the bottom. And like that, you know, for uh, picture books with doing kids, kids literature and things like that, uh, this is just a really fun way to quickly add some texture, like so. And uh, there's a bunch of them. So uh, the scribbler loop, you can see what that does. And uh, scribbler long crayon, this is a nice one. Again, lots of ways you could probably use this. Some of them take advantage of color dynamics again, some of them don't. Uh, you could always just activate them uh, if you wanted to do that. Some respond to direction, some don't. Uh, this one responds to the direction I move my stylus. So that can be really handy if I know that I'm, for example, painting some feathers on a bird and I want the feathers to all move in the same direction. They will follow my cursor, just like that. Uh, the, let's see here, the curl brush, similar stuff, graphite one. Uh, we've got a really tight line brush. This could be good for comics artists as well um, for many, many reasons. But I also like this one just for a texture because it's responding to the tilt or rather the angle of the pen so that I can have all these lines follow the direction of my stylus and the tilt as well. And then we get to the last little bit here. We have um, a fat bristle inker. This is really just for people who are doing uh, exactly that. They need to draw big, heavy lines that have a sort of brushy quality to them. The moppy brush um, is similar, only it also takes advantage of those wet edges, which is great. So uh, you can sort of overlay it several times, get darker and darker as you paint. So a lot of control there. And when you're ready, you can size it down and get some details in there, like so. And again, just, just striving for something that, that has a sort of natural media look to it, not so digital, you know? The Large Marge, really big brush. Um, this is a 250 pixel inking, inking brush. So anybody doing what I would, I guess if you were gonna do some kind of um, Japanese calligraphy or something, you could really knock that out of the park with this. And it responds again to tilt. So as I tilt away from vertical, I'm going to get more texture coming through. And as I tilt um, up towards 90 degrees, I'm going to get a heavier line. The Pastel Wolfie is a little pastel brush. Couldn't, couldn't get away with not including some kind of a nice dry media brush in here for anybody that's into pastels and those kinds of effects. This best to use a really light touch with this so the texture comes through and you can do some nice sort of um, color blends like this. Uh, this is called the Pastel Wolfie because my son, who's eight years old, was standing uh, next to me while I was designing this one and had some suggestions for it, so I named it after him. And finally, we have the hard pastel brush, so that's a nice complement to this other brush. They use the same texture, so there's consistency there, um, but you can get the, the hard edge effects with this one and then go back to the Wolfie for some softer effects to lay over. Uh, so I think that kind of covers the basis. So we have some paints, we have some sort of wet media effects, we have inks. Um, so everything you need to sort of draw and paint in a single set. And that's really the goal of these, these, mini, these mini sets that I'm releasing every quarter. So thanks. I'll turn it back over to you. I'll stop. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's all there is to it. We're just, we're keeping it simple. We want people to be able to keep track of when things come out. The question was about the naming, so, you call them winter um, brushes. Is that you know, at one point there was a discussion winter? about them having themes and things like that, like winter brushes might have some brushes for snow or or things of that nature, but that became too restrictive. And I thought mm -hmm. that um, if they're that highly focused, again, uh, that really isn't that useful for the customer. Um, I'd really like them to be able to download a set and be able to do um, as much as, as possible with a good variety of brushes. So in the most recent update, um, there, it was put out on Twitter with, with the Creative Cloud uh, Twitter account, with the Photoshop Twitter account, my own Twitter account, and Adobe Drawings Twitter account. So following Adobe Drawing, uh, Photoshop, and or myself on you, social is helpful. So Twitter mainly, um, 
there a way I to believe get we'll, we'll be posting the next one on Instagram as well through Adobe Drawing. And they, uh, there was some talk about, uh, about sending an email out to Photoshop subscribers for the next one. I don't know whether that's going to happen or not, so I don't want to make any promises. I think um, if you follow me, I, I make a lot of announcements about these, like when they're coming, and then once they're out, I always tweet about them for at least you know, a week <laughs> straight where I'll just repeatedly mention that they're available so that people who may have missed it the first time will, will see that. What's your Twitter right. handle, Kyle? My Twitter handle is Kyle T. Webster. So I'll write that here. Um, Thank you. Let me see. Any questions Maybe I'll Kyle? give you a little... Maybe stick around, but um, you can post them here before we get on to Andrea. Kyle T. Webster. And on Instagram, it's Kyle dot t dot webster because i foolishly canceled my instagram account and then when i tried to reopen it they wouldn't give me my old name back Kat, you're gonna okay. have to get on social <laughs> was, sorry learned. just saying i don't think you'll get an email yeah okay okay so i'll show you my part now so why amy's do you i will uh, finish to do uh, 3D illustration in Adobe Dimensions. So, and it's going to be just taking 10 minutes probably. I'm going to show you like the final result. So, yeah, this is like a rendering dimension. It, it did really take a uh, few minutes to render. So, it is really a fast, uh, a quick way to make uh, versatile and uh, Kind of like uh, paper-like uh, work, so it's kind of like uh, it's really interesting. Of ver uh, flexible, as I mentioned, with uh, at assets and texture taking import. So, the uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just like uh, uh, it's available to for the project if you want uh, on um, on the tab, um, but I'll show you like. Uh, what I'm doing is just finding uh, on the start assets. You just need to find uh, the plane object and just drop into the scene. And after that, you just like try to make uh, to rotate, like to see like if it's facing to the camera. So you just double click on the cube. You just change the base color, and this is my texture for a mountain. You see, the mountain is look a bit weird. Um, it's because there is no opacity material, and um, to add the opacity material, just uh, add uh, on a little box there. Uh, click as the same as the base color. And then um, I just put a uh, alpha map, which makes uh, the transparency for the object. And uh, I'm going to show you how to, you can easily create uh, this kind of texture in uh, Photoshop. So for instance, for the tree, I just use um, the winter brushes and I like uh, this organic uh, chalky feel to like the trees uh, and but all my components are uh, I use a lot of clipping mask and uh, a lot of, I like to use laser tools and can cre easily create another assets easily and just by changing like uh, the shape. Uh, so I can use like the eraser tool. Probably the only thing uh, with the eraser tool, like in the new winter brushes, there are no erasers. Um, but I think uh, that's not a big deal. So because I can easily show you all, I can steal uh, just a brush. Uh, from instance, I can use um, is Farbistoinker, and. Uh, 
I need to remind her about these texture in a brush tip shape. Uh, I can easily copy this texture at the same time and I can put on, a, on a, this list, I can just say copy texture to other tools and I'll, I can have directly on the, uh, on the brush settings. So it's quite handy. Uh, I just need to remember about these. And unfortunately, you can't copy all the settings, but that's kind of like a trick you can do. And also, you might want to change the mode for the eraser because sometimes it doesn't like. So I can just tweak a bit, uh, make a bit more contrast. Uh, it's got like uh, see like uh, how do you like I like when a, a razor li leaves some bits of uh, image I think that uh, gives a nice organic uh, look so that's one thing I really like from uh, so I can just easily uh, make kind of copy the feel from the brushes that were there. So it's quite it's quite nice. Uh, if I just yeah, I'm just trying to make another shape for the tree. Uh, I can just make a new funny shape as well. Doesn't it doesn't really care from this art style I like because it's kind of loosey and uh, it's not really precise. It's kind of like childish, but at the same time it's got a nice feel to uh, this kind of like, especially with the uh, dimension uh, rendering. It's, it's really realistic, so you want to be uh, not to be too precise with the shape because it won't look uh, too right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, OK. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's quite, quite, that's quite handy. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, that's quite handy. I, I never used too much the mode, but I think, uh, that, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, now that's perfectly. Thank you so much. Now I'll just use that. Never mind using the razor tool. Uh, yeah, I think. Uh, just finishing a few bits. Probably can add more colors as well. I'm just doing another clipping mask. I like to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just finished now. So I'm just like, uh, if you see, this is this step. Yeah. So this is a base color. So when you just you want to save this as a PNG, so you have you will keep your transparency. But uh, uh, also uh, for dimension, it's got this base color map. But also, when you want to use an alpha map, you need. Uh, Andrea, are you still there? For, uh, for 
oh, okay. the transparent uh, transparency talk, data. So everything that is black, uh, represented black on the texture is transparent. And uh, I just group everything uh, into in one group and I just put a clipping mask on top. So, and that the white uh, color, it means that the data is visible. So it won't, sh it, it will show on, on the asset. So if you see, I just put three alpha just for naming conventions and like, uh, I just put another plane and then I just uh, double click to another base color and then I'm going to put a tree base color and then I'm going to put the opacity map as well. Um, you might want to also scale a bit. I did a, pro, a, a ratio of two one, so I'm just scaling this by two uh, in a vertical. I just need to rotate. Uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. I think everyone can easily do this kind of stuff. But if you're willing to be a, a bit more, uh, use a, I did uh, this book by myself. So I use a 3D software and I kind of texture it. Uh, but it was really easy to apply the texture in the same way. So. I did detection for the shop and you can easily create as well. Uh, so another thing is uh, Dimension's got this really powerful deco system. So in this case, uh, uh, you just need to like uh, drag and drop. So this image is like, uh, it's kind of like a water bed. So it's kind of this uh, river and like, uh, just got the transparency and I just drag and drop into dimensions and here, here the textures are deco. Uh, it means it just overlay on top of an object and uh, you can scale it, you can rotate it and uh, you can change uh, also the properties. So roughness, it means it will be more shiny so it will reflect more the environment and uh, metallic, it will just have more uh, metal, metal feel. So I'm just put 100% roughness because that's what gives the more paper-like feel. And uh, yeah, and then if I want to dip a rock, I'm just putting uh, this funny shape called the decahedron and like uh, and just scale a bit and uh, and I put uh, a rock texture. So I show you like uh, I did uh, this rock texture in terrain uh, uh, in Photoshop and uh, it's quite convenient. Uh, you can easily edit your textures directly from dimension, just clicking this edit button. Uh, you will go just straight in Photoshop. But sometimes when I need uh, some, so here I use the winter brushes, but I need some settings a bit more, uh, give more or uh, kind of like this organic feel. So I, I just like I use, for instance, this drop dot and I put like uh, another color, kind of like uh, I put, I like to put my flow really low, like uh, two or three percent and then kind of go to like uh, giving these nice dots, kind of give a big feel of like organic um, rock. So I kind of, 
uh, like yes, uh, do some variations. Uh, I might just do color dynamics, I put more brightness into it, so I can have nice uh, variations uh, with transparency as well. And uh, yeah, and after that, I can just put uh, to show you like you can update really easily. I just show you like. Uh, uh, just control save and everything it will be updated directly in dimensions uh, I think that's really convenient to like uh, say uh, you can create really easily and uh, one major feature that I found is with dimension you can also share uh, directly online your work so if I say on the right top corner, I see this button and it looks like it's for uploading and I can just publish this scene and just put uh, uh, the name and uh, just create this. Uh, it would now upload my uh, work on a creative cloud and uh, you can easily show uh, to everyone your work and so you can see here and uh, is uh, it's still in beta but it's really powerful tool that you can uh, easily share to everyone to, and I feel it's, it's feel it's kind of nice to see uh, how you can uh, iterate and create easily uh, 3D illustration directly with Photoshop in Dimension. So, yeah. Uh, also, one other thing is when you want to create a better looking one, you can just uh, fill and test with the uh, render preview. So, you just uh, click uh, uh, slash and it will create this window and you can see if there material is right, if you like the shadows, if you like the lighting and everything. And there are so many options really. So uh, it's def definitely uh, a feel uh, when you want to create this paper-like uh, uh, illustration. Dimension is one of the tools that will allow you to like create more easily. So. Um, yeah, I think I'm I'm done here. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so I said uh, as a it's the same as the book. I said I use uh, this 3D program, but you can uh, easily create uh, also with all these shapes uh, from uh, the dimension and uh, starter asset, but. If you want, there are some free three D programs like Blender, but like uh, for Andrea, the character, uh, it's just a plane. Sorry, there was a question and, uh, on how you made you that just, little character in the front. Is, uh, and uh, to create that shape, uh, I just made a plane and then put uh, some uh, some curves on that, so you can see like uh, is uh, it's nothing special really, so. Yeah, it just uh, it just paper folded. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you can cr easily create in Photoshop. Uh, if you know Photoshop as a 3D tool and uh, you can like uh, just uh, kind of create an easy shape like this and then uh, trying, um, what I'm doing is like uh, trying to, uh, I'm trying to find uh, an add round shape and then I'm just going to do uh, almost limiting the spacing uh, to be sure there are no gaps within and then just like stroke path with the, pen, uh, with the brush and then you can create easily from new 3D extrusion from selected layer 
and that this will process uh, uh, the 3D. Uh, it will change now to the 3D work, uh, workspace, and you can easily rotate uh, uh, the 3D model. I'll show you, like, uh, uh, you can. Uh, yeah, I didn't use that that much, uh, especially because uh, I have my special programs. But yeah, you can easily create three uh, D models also in uh, in Photoshop, and to export to Dimension, you just need to click a three D export three D layer. Be sure to you export to Water Wavefront OBJ and. Uh, Click OK. But the thing with uh, uh, you want uh, to be perfectly up, like a perfect plane, so you might want uh, to be sure uh, this method uh, it won't work uh, perfectly with uh, uh, with uh, soft. Uh, with dimension because it's not meant to be used in this way for the shop. Uh, so it's kind of like uh, I prefer to use a free software like Blender, or in my case, I use 3ds Max, which is a 3D modeling tool, uh, which you can create just uh, normal planes and you can shape it uh, in whatever way you want. Uh, you can, uh, I think you can, uh, I can try, but you can probably apply a decal, but uh, you won't be able to apply uh, a material. So if I see here, uh, I get part. Oh, yeah. So if I see here. Uh, yeah, so if I just put there. That's the problem. Also, like uh, Photoshop uh, does have a nice, uh, it's really uh, basic 3D modeling. You can just do a shredding from layers or other shapes. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you can uh, model planes, but if I put this uh, image on top, uh, it might probably work. One thing, uh, maybe there is a way to trick, it was uh, making the object transparent, but I realize uh, you can't uh, put on top uh, the transparency. So if I put like a, a, the Opacity down, it will go. So, uh, yeah. Also, one thing is is that Photoshop uh, it doesn't allow you to uh, create uh, manage all the materials, and it's quite also complicated uh, respect to other three D programs. But yeah, you can. You can probably work uh, uh, just with the Photoshop, but as definitely there's more work uh, to be done in that kind of stuff. I'm not sure there are any questions. Does anybody have any questions while um, Andrea has the, the presentation uh, layout open? You may be able yeah, to any more questions. Otherwise, you know, let me, uh, I can switch layouts to the main Q&A page. If you've got anything else, let me just do that. And we can have a look and see what questions there are. What's been going on while you've been talking, Andrea? Yeah, add your... Uh, 
Vanette is asking, where do we download the winter brushes? Um, if you're in Photoshop, can I quickly share my screen there for a minute or just so everybody can see this? Would that be okay? I just want to, I, I should have mentioned that up front, so sorry for not doing so. Um, to get any Photoshop brushes, you need to click on your brushes panel. And when your brushes panel is open, you'll see this tiny little drop down menu in the top right corner. And if you click on that, you can go to get more brushes. And um, what that'll do is it will launch um, a uh, page so that you can go and sign in. And then uh, when you sign in, you're going to be um, linked to the page that has all the brush sets, including the updates. So I hope that helps. Yeah, I think also it's the same when you're using like uh, any, like also in a new iPad for uh, Photoshop for iPad, it's going to be the same. So I think you can use any brushes uh, as well in uh, like a tablet version. Yes, and in Gemini, you'll be able to import brushes from uh, your brush libraries as well. So if anybody uses libraries, um, then, you know, if you drag and drop brushes into a library, they will be able to be instantly updated. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, we forgot about that. <laughs> ah. I could quickly demonstrate if you have, I mean, if we have five minutes, I can I can cover that. Unless, Andrea, you want to do something or do you want me to cover that? Not cover that. Um, also, Warren is asking about Project Gemini, and I think it's a, a standalone app for iPad. And it's all about... Uh, a more organic brush feeling. It's got this nice new uh, brush engine, I think. Do you know a bit more? Yeah, Project Gemini. Project Gemini is actually going to be really heavily focused on the needs of illustrators and illustration workflows. It will have what are called live brushes, which allow the paint to stay wet, whether you're working with oils or watercolors. Um, you can also import your Photoshop brushes, and we also support vector brushes, so you can draw with uh, in a, the same environment with both vector and raster or pixel brushes. Um, and then it's also going to be a multi-surface app. It's not going to be just for iPad, actually. Um, so there's going to be a, a, a staged uh, rollout of the app where it will eventually be for um, not just iOS, but for uh, Windows. And then down the road from that, even Mac OS. So it'll be a, a, a multi-surface drawing application. Um, with some pretty robust features. So it's, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll quickly show mixer brushes unless anybody has any more questions okay. about, about that. Okay, thanks. Anything else? Um, maybe I'll just jump ahead a little bit <laughs> to spring. So I'm working on the spring brushes right now. Um, and several of those actually are mixer brushes, so I may as well just grab one and show you. Um, so Photoshop's mixer brushes allow you to mix color and, and paint uh, on the surface. So you can essentially control the wetness of the paint, um, the flow of the paint. If I were to, uh, and you can load your brush. These are, these are quite advanced when compared with uh, regular Photoshop brushes, they do have some limiting features in terms of their customize, uh, how much that you can customize them, but they do all kinds of really great things. So um, if you look at the very top of my screen where my tool options are, one of the things you can do with a mixer brush is actually select more than one color at a time and paint with those. It's pretty amazing. So here it gives you the option to load the brush with solid colors, and that would behave like a normal Photoshop brush, but if you leave this unchecked, uh, I could, for example, use my eyedropper tool and just tap right here. And then I look over here in this in this uh, window and I see the area that I've, I've selected. And then when I paint, I'm painting with more than one color. So 
this is great for all kinds of reasons. It means you could actually paint with a full image if you wanted to. Um, you can do lots of 3D sort of effects. Uh, the example I always give is um, I just paint a sort of a, a sphere, um, give it a little, little light source, and, and then um, I change my mixer brush to a simple circle. And now um, what will happen is when I select that sphere, I can do a sort of 3D sort of painting with it. Uh, I should make that highlight more pronounced, but hopefully you get the idea. Let's see here. I'll do that. There we go. Um, lots of lots of interesting possibilities with this. So uh, a lot of uh, hand lettering people like this. If they enable shape dynamics, um, things like that. You know, you can do these kinds of things that you've probably seen all over the place. Uh, these really nice three dimensional looking um, pieces of writing. These are achieved with uh, mixer brush. So it not only allows you to mix paint, but also to do these really nifty effects by sampling literally anything from your canvas. Um, what else? Uh, I think I don't have time to cover the settings here, like the wetness and the load and mix, but just to quickly show you what load does, this is another thing you can do differently from a regular brush, is you can actually have it uh, run out of paint eventually. So. But I'm going to reduce the load even more. So as I start to paint, um, it's not doing it. There, eventually, <laughs> eventually it's going to run out of paint. And if I, if I, you know, reduce the wetness and the flow, that'll help too. So eventually, there it goes. Bye bye. It just runs out, and that's pre that's pretty cool. So um, if you wanted to, then you could take advantage of that by having it so that you could only paint uh, very short brush strokes. Um, and you can also increase your spacing to make that happen. So I can paint. I'm not doing a very good, good job of this, but um, hopefully that makes sense. And then for uh, mixing, that just tells you how much of the paint that's already on the surface you want to mix with what's there. So uh, if I have the mixing set to zero and I select another color, I can paint pretty well over what's there. It's not going to pick up very much. But if I turn the mixing up to 100, it'll more quickly pick up the color that's underneath it. See? So anyway, lots of power, lots of control with mixer brushes, and lots of special effects that can be achieved, and they're worth looking at. If anybody wants to not bother with any of this, all these settings and trying to figure this all out, um, you can simply use the uh, mixer brushes in the Mega Pack. They're in the Real Oils category. So the Mega Pack's available to everybody. If you're a Photoshop subscriber, it's already there from the brush site to download. And there are just a bunch of oils in there that are super fun to work with. So give this a try. Okay. Hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching. Okay, we've got one minute left if anybody has any burning questions. Otherwise, uh, stop the recording. Okay, thanks, Kristen. Good to know. Thanks for the link. Will which vector brushes work with Animate? Can you be specific? Do you mean the brushes that are in Gemini? Um, right, okay. So I don't know if you mean actually importing the brushes into Animate directly out of Gemini because they are default brushes in Gemini that are built into the app. Um, we will ultimately support importing vector brushes into Gemini as well, in the same way that we support Photoshop brushes. Um, I have already been on, yes, okay, see so your next question. Yes, I've actually been talking to members of the team uh, who are working and building, uh, working on and building Animate, and we have already started conversations about custom brushes for Animate. Um, and the same goes for Illustrator. Uh, although at the moment, Animate's actually a higher priority just because it's been such a long time request and there are not a lot of um, brushes that exist for Animate, really. With Illustrator, um, there are lots and lots of really great custom brushes you can get. I highly recommend the brushes you can get from um, uh, Von Glitschka. If you can look those up, um, he, Von makes truly excellent 
excellent, excellent illustrator brushes. And he sort of covered the bases in terms of just all the kinds of marks he would ever want to make. So I would certainly look into what he's created. Um, Animate though is, is really, really needs brushes. Yeah, that shortcut's pretty, pretty difficult. So I recommend trying actions instead, if you can. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much for suggesting this particular Tech Wednesday. This is great. Um, and thank you very much to Kyle for spending his time here today with you guys. I think it's uh, pretty awesome what they can do. Lots of uh, fun stuff ahead for everybody. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Kyle, for uh, hosting uh, this What Tech Wednesday with me. So I'm so glad. And also, Andrea, I'm a huge fan now of uh, checking out your work, and I really want to. I really want to try Dimension because of your demonstration. It's wonderful. Yeah, definitely go go for it because it's meant to for. As a game artist, I was a, I was skeptical about Dimension, but like oh now I just love it because it's so easy and fast. So definitely try cool. it. Cool, I love that illustration you were working on.